Hey everyone, a very happy Tuesday. It's Tech Talk Tuesday and we're back with another installment of the ARM Tech Talk series. This is the place for the latest and greatest trends, technologies and best practices from ARM and our ecosystem partners. I hope you had a great long weekend if you're in the UK and US and uh, got a good amount of rest. We're back with another one of these focused this time on the automotive industry and I'm super excited to be joined today uh, by Sanjay and Jaime from Sonatas who are going to give today's ARM Tech Talk. Uh, before, before we get started, uh, if you're a regular to this series, you'll know the drill that I usually go through a couple of little housekeeping items first um, and talk through how you can really get involved in today's conversation, uh, what's coming up, and then handing over to the team at Sonatas. So, uh, Jaime, if you can go to the next slide, please, that would be amazing. Uh, so if you want to engage with us on Twitter or LinkedIn, please use the hashtag Arm Tech Talks. We'd love to hear from you, uh, what you've been inspired by over these 67. I think this is the 67th talk now we've done uh, with of this series. So it's a phenomenal amount of content. All of them are available on demand at youtube.com slash arm. And all of the upcoming talks get posted on arm.com slash tech talks. And of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, because then you won't miss any of the recordings. And in fact, you get a little sneak peek every week at what's coming up, because we just generally upload a little promo video. Um, so hopefully you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. If not, go and do that now. Uh, in terms of what's coming up, on the next slide, we've got a bunch of tech talks coming up. So today we're going to hear from Sonatas. Next week, we're going to hear from NXP with their Ethos U65 uh, powered IMX93 platform. Super excited about that one. Um, there's a real, there's a bit of an automotive angle to that as well as an IoT angle. So if you're interested in everything AI, definitely uh, register for that one. And then later on today, we're going to get the next two talks live. So keep an eye out for those. Those are on June 13th from Core AVI and ARM uh, around functional safety. And then on June 20th, ST are giving a, a, an AI focused talk as well. So a lot of great uh, talks coming up to make sure you register for those. And um, yeah, before we uh, let's get into today's topic, right? Let's get in talking to Sanjay and Jaime who are just getting their cameras on now. Um, so before I do hand over to them, if you've got any questions at any time during today's tech talk, uh, please use the Q&A box in the menu bar of Zoom, the Zoom menu bar down below, uh, and we'll get to those at the end. Uh, so I'm really excited today to be joined uh, by Sanjay and Jaime from Sonatas, who are going to give today's tech talk and a really great demo as well. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sanjay. So Sanjay, great you could join us today. Thank you so much for uh, today's tech talk. And uh, why don't you briefly introduce yourself and then take it away. Thanks ever so much. Thank you, Tobias, and thanks uh, for ARM for hosting this uh, tech talk. So my name is Sanjay Khatri, and I lead the efforts here at uh, Sonatas to help our automaker uh, customers, partners, tier one, tier two partners, and just the broader tech, uh, auto tech um, ecosystem, uh, understand our technology, our product, uh, what sort of solutions they drive, uh, and what kind of use cases uh, are supported by those solutions. I've been um, in and around product management, product marketing, leading those uh, those uh, functions uh, for the last 10 years in um, IoT, uh, in connected cars, vehicle telematics, uh, infotainment systems, location-based services, uh, and just generally on uh, both embedded um, automotive software and uh, cloud. Uh, that's a little bit about me. Jaime, why don't you give an introduction to yourself? Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jaime Alcantara. I'm a senior product manager at Sonatos. I've been with the company for almost four years now. And before that, I was actually working for Mercedes-Benz uh, back in Stuttgart for almost 10 years. So I've gone all through after sales, uh, systems integration, to then as a chief of staff to the CTO. Um, so I'm very excited to be here uh, and tell you a little bit more about our solutions. Great, thank you. Next slide. So a little bit about uh, Sonatus. Uh, we're an automotive software supplier based in the Silicon Valley. Next. Uh, we were founded in 2018 um, and have been in production with uh, Hyundai Kia Motors, uh, which is the third largest uh, automotive OEM by volume uh, since 2020. Uh, and we um, uh, will be in dozens of their models, uh, model vehicles, as well as millions of vehicles uh, on the road by 2024. So we've had an opportunity to really uh, test our and, and prove our products uh, in the field at a pretty massive scale. Next. 
Um, we also rely on a robust ecosystem of partners from silicon all the way to the cloud, uh, and we continue to add more uh, of these partners to our roster. Next slide. And um, last but not least, uh, we uh, really bring a unique blend of uh, expertise and experience uh, that span um, both the modern data center as well as embed embedded automotive uh, systems and solutions. Um, we feel that um, you know the modern data center with uh, software defined everything is uh, is a really good exemplar for what's happening in other domains as well, including the automotive uh, domain. And in some sense, we look at the uh, vehicle as a mini data center on wheels with all the compute and networking and storage, et cetera, that um, and communications that happens in the vehicle. So uh, we're we're really um, we really feel that we we bring a lot of uh, that strength of blending both the um, the modern data center as well as the embedded automotive experience uh, to the table. Next slide. So before we get into uh, our product, um, and Jaime will get into a lot more details, um, I just want to pause here real quick and uh, talk about data collection in general. Um, you know, obviously, as cars have been connected uh, more and more in the last decade or so, uh, data collection isn't some isn't something that's uh, totally new. Uh, automotive companies have been doing this for a while, but the challenge, uh, and as our our talk, uh, the topic for uh, this talk is will also suggest that in order to really derive value from vehicle data, it has to be done dynamically. Uh, up until now, data collection on vehicles has really been very static in the sense that uh, all the uh, the vehicle systems, the, the different uh, electrical and electronic components have been instrumented uh, to be, to provide uh, or to basically provide access to data in a very static manner. Uh, and so when you do need um, new types of data at different times, uh, in different circumstances, or to drive different use cases that you may not have thought of today, uh, it becomes very difficult to go back in there and to adapt uh, your vehicle systems to do that. And typically that generally happens only on new models, which means that you know the millions and even tens of millions of vehicles that you have on the road, uh, the, the use cases that you need uh, the data for are really um, you're shut out from that uh, with uh, from those particular vehicles that are on the in the field. So um, what we've done instead, next slide, is uh, to really build a um, a data collection product called the Collector uh, that it works in a very dynamic fashion. Uh, we build uh, our product on top of uh, uh, standards based uh, hardware, increasingly ARM based hardware. We're starting to find ARM. Uh, based um, compute um, hardware uh, across all the different domains in the vehicle, so it's it's it makes it it makes our lives much easier. Uh, and um, of course, um, on top of that, we have uh, industry standard OS and middleware um, that is also allowing us to build some of the higher level solutions, including our collector product. The collector product itself consists of two different parts. Uh, there's the cloud piece, and then there's the in vehicle collector service. The cloud part uh, provides a, um, a both a UI uh, console as well as APIs to be able to define uh, data collection policies um, and to be able to build very granular data collection policies that you can deploy to um, a single vehicle, a subset of vehicles, or at a massive scale, even up to millions of vehicles at a time. And those policies are then executed by the, um, the collector service in the vehicle to get the exact data that uh, you need for a particular use case. Next slide. So what that allows us to do is um, it, to be really precise about the data that's being collected. Um, so if I'm looking for you know, um, uh, data that's collect that that basically um, uh, that I want to collect when the driver taps on the brake uh, when the vehicle is running 25 miles an hour plus uh, in the rain, making a left turn. Uh, I can I can be able to define policies at that level of granularity to be able to collect the data specific to that particular event. And what that allows me to do then is, or, or uh, allows the OEMs to do is to really sort of reduce the in-vehicle and, and cloud data processing storage and transmission costs. 
And by surgically picking out this data, it also makes the, the downstream data um, analytics also much uh, easier to do because you've basically been able to um, get this precise data that you want. Uh, it makes it much easier for you to then feed that data into the analytics models that you uh, that you have um, to be able to, uh, to, to draw insights from that data. Um, and then um, by abstracting the data collection into these policies, we've also reduced the need for uh, ECU code changes or complex OTAs. So you can essentially use these abstracted data collection policies to be able to collect data across uh, pretty much any of the vehicle systems um, and, and to be able to do that without any uh, software changes or any complex OTAs. Um, and then um, by allowing you to do this in a very dynamic fashion, you're also able to redefine the, the data that you want to collect so that you can start um, using that data for new use cases that you may not have thought of when you were building that vehicle. And so you can essentially um, support these emerging use cases after the production of the vehicle when the vehicles are already in the hands of customers and still be able to collect the data that you need. The other thing um, that um, uh, this uh, product allows uh, OEMs to do is to be able to build um, a data collection system that um, spans across multiple domains in the vehicle uh, so that it, it, it allows multiple um, business units and, and different functional groups within the OEM to collect that data. Uh, often what we see is uh, OEMs uh, in particular, in one particular domain are doing the data collection, which is not always accessible to other um, other domains in that uh, or other groups in that in that OEM. So by allowing them to have a platform that supports these different use cases uh, and across different vehicle systems, uh, you're able to provide a single solution to uh, to provide data collection across across the board. And then finally, um, uh, the um, the product um, really leverages the standardized ARM based um, silicon for uh, for running our application. So it allow this allows us to be hardware agnostic and to essentially work with the different vendors that are supporting the ARM based uh, architecture uh, across the different vehicle systems. Next slide. So before I hand it off to Jaime to go into a little bit more detail uh, of our solution, um, just wanted to give you a glimpse of a um, uh, a use case or a case study of uh, one of our customers who's using Collector to diagnose issues and, and um, in the field in real time um, for customers and to get uh, faster resolution for those customers. So, you know, in this case, um, you know, we've all experienced that, um, that service light that comes on on the dashboard, which intermittently comes on, you're not exactly sure what it is, uh, and you take it to the dealer you, you, or the service center, um, you, they may be able to reproduce that problem or not, uh, oftentimes, it generally means leaving that car in the in in the shop, and for them to then um, download all the data to be able to maybe potentially send it to the uh, to the OEM to analyze it to be able to get the fix. So instead, what our customers uh, is doing is basically um, allowing the customers to uh, when they report a uh, a particular problem, such as this warning light coming on, uh, the customer support is able to uh, create a policy. Uh, that is triggered by that particular warning light uh, and uh, collect the, all of the data that's uh, uh, that's necessary for that. That includes ECU data, um, log data, um, different network um, uh, statistics, et cetera, to, uh, to collect all of that and um, to basically analyze that. Um, next, please. To be able to analyze that and to be able to come up with a resolution uh, that they can then hand off to the service centers to allow uh, the service centers to quickly turn around that customers um, uh, when that customer does come in for for repairs. Um, and then um, what this also allows more importantly is that uh, it allows the OEMs to deploy these sorts of policies across uh, across the fleet so that um, uh, or across a large number of vehicles so that they can basically see if this this particular issue is isolated to a particular vehicle or it's more, uh, more widespread, and to be able to get ahead of those problems before they become um, in critical issues. So this is an example of uh, the uh, our, the collector product uh, being used um, currently 
with a customer in you know to in in um, uh, in a real world situation. And um, now let me hand it off to Jaime to go into a little bit more deep uh, details about the the product and and also go through a hands on demo. Cool. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the key features of Collector, right? And it first starts with a Collector running on top of a ARM-based hardware, right? As Sanjay was saying. And you can really find ARM-based in the automotive industry pretty much everywhere, right? And, and most of the uh, automotive leading suppliers, for example, NXP, Marvel, or Broadcom. Um, so since ARM is everywhere in the vehicle, Collector can also run in any of these domains. So you could find it in the infotainment system, in the ADAS, or the central gateway. And it's really up to the OEM's choice uh, to decide where they want to run Collector on. So now that we have the hardware base, uh, we also have our middleware layer, right? Uh, our operating system as well. So Collector is running on top of Linux. Uh, it also runs on top of uh, Autosar Adaptive. It's compatible to it. And we are also part of the uh, SOFI initiative, so we also support that. So now let's get to the Collector uh, modules itself. So we start with this interface to the middleware layer with our data receiver. So I like to talk about Collector um, with a three angle perspective. So Collector is really different from any other data collection software that you uh, may have interacted uh, before because of three reasons. Uh, the first one is because of the wide range of data it can actually collect. So here we can see in our data receiver uh, part here that we can actually collect anything that is going on on the network. So most of the people understand like vehicle signals, right? As speed, uh, odometer reading, uh, state of charge and so on. But we can also capture ethernet packets, uh, responses to UDS diagnostic requests, the location of the vehicle, any files such as log files, uh, or even media data, as you can think from ADA systems, for example, camera, radar, uh, LIDAR, and so on, or any dynamic event. So once we have that, uh, the other main reason why Collector is different is because of its uh, trigger engine. Oh, sorry, I wanted to select this one. <laughs> uh, so it's the trigger evaluation engine. So once you're able to collect all this data, you can put it together in different uh, scenarios to collect only the data that you actually need when you need it. Uh, so you can actually trigger on when the speed is above a certain limit. You can create more complex kind of like trigger behaviors where you can say when the speed is across this limit, but also when this happens or when it's Mondays, 8 a.m. Uh, or when the vehicle is entering a certain geofence location. And the third reason uh, why Collector is different is by its uh, configurable nature. So we can see here on the data collector modules that we have like data capture and storage, uh, data transmission, all those things can be configured by how Sanji was saying through policies. So essentially OEM engineers will go into our user interface or maybe use their own ones and use APIs instead. And they can actually uh, create these policies and define when do they want to collect the data from the vehicle and how they want to collect it. So they can actually say, I want to collect data in this many number of files. I want to do it in a batch way. I want to stream the data in real time to the cloud. Um, and all those things can be configured in these policies. And I, what it also allows is the policy is a very small lightweight file that is sent from the cloud to the vehicle. So I can actually change the behavior of this collector service. Uh, even as if the car is uh, driving around. So I don't have to do a whole OTA campaign. I don't even have to restart the car. So uh, with the use case that Sanjay was explaining before, if a customer or the customer of an OEM, like the end driver is having an issue, they're able to deploy these uh, very fine-grained policies to detect the issue um, without interfering with any of the vehicle systems. Um, another uh, important feature of Collector before I jump into the demo is that it supports multiple use cases. So you can think that Sanjay, for example, is working on his own policy, right? Maybe he is interested in collecting long-term battery data. 
but maybe I am in a different business unit within an OEM. I'm more of like an ADAS engineer. I'm more interested in collecting camera data. So he can work on his policy. I can work on my policy. And in the end, what our system does is it essentially it combines all the use cases together for the target vehicles and deploys like a super policy. So that way we're able to collect all the data that is required for all the different business units and transmit it to the cloud. And then we just tag that data so that everyone can actually find what they were looking for in the first place. Okay. So without further ado, let me jump into one of our demos that we have prepared today. So let me go into full screen. Uh, so this is, uh, first off the bat, this is the uh, recording that uh, we did during the CES uh, 2023. So this January, just a couple of months back. And what you're going to see here is uh, we're going to be interacting with these policies. We're going to deploy it to the vehicle and we're actually going to change the behavior of how this vehicle is collecting certain data. And then we're going to be able to upload the data to the cloud, visualize it in real time, and analyze it and derive any, any conclusions out of it. And after this video demo, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the, to the real vehicle control console, and we're going to have a more uh, interactive kind of like policy creation flow. So let me start the video, and I'll talk you through it while things are happening. So as you can see on this screen, what we're looking at right now is a vehicle on the top right hand. Uh, so we have a, we had a GoPro actually mounted on the vehicle that was live streaming into the CES. And this vehicle is actually driving around circles around our office. And as you can see here, the, this vehicle is running our collector service. And this is, by the way, one of the vehicles that you can actually buy off the, uh, uh, off the dealership today. Uh, so this is the Genesis GV60. And what you can see here is we have already comprised a dashboard that is collecting some data, right? Like the odometer, outside temperature, state of charge, the vehicle speed. But one thing that it's not collecting yet is the braking behavior because no one has deployed a policy to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create one of those policies together and we're going to deploy it to the vehicle and see how it changes its behavior. So now we just went to our management console. And here is where we configure all these policies and many other things, as you can see on the left-hand side. But today, we're going to focus only on the collector side. So here we have different policies to collect different data. And what we're going to do now is we're going to open a new driver style policy. And in this policy, what you can see here is it comprises a different set of conditions. So the conditions define when I'm going to collect the data, right? And right now we're going to collect the data when the vehicle is on, when the vehicle is driving above 15 kilometers per hour, when it's in a certain uh, location, and when the acceleration of the vehicle actually matches our braking behavior. And we're also going to capture different signals of it. And let me pause the video here uh, real quick. Uh, so once we have defined this policy, and let me uh, go back just one second. So here on the lower part of the screen, you can see what data we can capture in this use case. So when the conditions above are met, then we're going to collect the location of the vehicle, and we're also going to collect a different number of signals. And in this case, we're going to collect like the braking behavior, the acceleration behavior, the steering behavior, but we only want to collect those data when these conditions are met. So we don't want to stream the data all the time to the cloud because that generates a lot of noise. And yes, it would fulfill the use case, but we really want to focus on the data that we are targeting because that's going to allow us to save a lot of like bandwidth cost, uh, cellular cost, and especially if any OEM wants to run any AI or ML model behind it, high quality data is more important than quantity, right? So with our data collector, that's a possibility. So now I'm going to play this back. What we're going to do is we're going to deploy the policy. And this is our deployment screen. So here is where we decide which vehicles are going to receive this new data collection policy. So I can add vehicles, for example, by VIN. Imagine I'm at an OEM and in the testing phase, so I only want to test this policy first on two to three vehicles, right? Because I just want to validate that what I'm doing is working correctly. 
Uh, but I can also define the vehicles by attributes. So I could say, I just want to deploy this vehicle to, let's say my Sanjay's fleet, because Sanjay may have is a rental car company. They have like a uh, hundred different vehicles. So I could, I could choose that. I could also say, I want to deploy this policy to a particular vehicle model, uh, to a particular engine type or very different like uh, network communications DBs. And I can also like add exclusions. So for example, I'm testing this. I want to deploy it to all the vehicle models that match GV60, but I want to leave out uh, the vehicle from our CEO because I don't want to mess with that vehicle unless I'm like uh, pretty sure of what's going on. Um, but in this case, in this demo, what we're going to do is we're going to choose this deploy all that apply. This means the policy is just going to target everything that it can. And gladly for us in the CES, this was the, the only vehicle we were connected to. So we're going to click there. We're going to validate and deploy. And now we're going to watch the deployment flow go from the cloud to the vehicle. So let's see if this jumps to the next one. OK. So the deployment flow actually happens almost immediately. Uh, so it just takes like maybe one or two seconds to get into the vehicle. And as we can see here, uh, the new policy at the top left already changed from this baseline policy to this new driver style monitoring, which, for example, could be used by uh, insurance companies to track how the driving behavior of the driving is going. So now all these widgets are showing us the data that we weren't collecting before. So now we can see that the uh, the braking data, we can see the acceleration data, the steering wheel angle, the steering aggressiveness, or the braking force. And one interesting part here, as you can see in, in some of these widgets, is that uh, we can also define a buffer of what to collect the data before the event happened, right? So this is especially important if you think about a crash and you're collecting some signals. Uh, normally, whatever happens after the crash is not as interested as what led to that crash. So in our data collector, you can actually define your data capture window. So you can say, when this event happened, now I want five seconds of historical data to be captured alongside of it. And you can even see here on the left-hand side, the difference between like this uh, low granularity and high granularity data combined in the same, in the same policy. So we're able to say, I want to collect the speed every, let's say, five seconds, because I know it doesn't change that often. But during a braking event, um, that actually changes much faster. So then I want a uh, much um, a sensitivity to that data. And with that, this is uh, the end of this uh, video demo. Great. Thanks, uh, Jaime. Um... So, so just to wrap up, um, so we, we, again, we started this talk uh, by saying that, um, you know, what automotive companies really uh, need for maximizing the value of their data is to be able to be, have very dynamic data collection, data collection that can be, uh, that can be configured pretty much at any time in the vehicle life. Uh, cycle, including you know after its production, when it's in the hands of customers, uh, to really be able to then uh, derive these uh, these more advanced use cases. Um, so you know what we see here is you know collector um, provides that very dynamic cap capability to configure uh, that policy and to deploy it uh, to not only just new vehicles but also vehicles uh, in the field, as is in, is in the case of. Um, the customer uh, that I mentioned, where they're actually using um, um, you know, customer uh, issues and being able to deploy uh, policies in real time to be able to troubleshoot those issues. Um, we also um, showed how um, you know this solution uh, allows uh, the uh, the diversity of or supports a diverse set of use cases. So it's no longer just the ADAS unit or the powertrain unit or the IVI, uh, the infotainment system um, uh, uh, groups within an OEM that have access to data collection, but essentially um, have the ability to have um, you know, a, uh, a single platform that allows them to collect data across all of those different domains and, and, and also do that simultaneously 
um, using a single policy that allows them to essentially capture the different data that they need. And then finally, um, the, the precise nature of the collection policies means that you're, you're just getting the data that you need uh, to be able to drive the insights or do the troubleshooting, et cetera, that, uh, that you want to do um, and not um, have to collect data in bulk. Um, and also more importantly, not have to do any significant uh, code changes or updates on the vehicle systems itself, on the ECUs, to be able to adapt your data collection needs um, and to do this with uh, with these lightweight policies uh, and that, that can be deployed at any time. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of what a essentially a next generation data collection can look like. Um, a lot of this obviously is uh, is enabled by some of the, the vehicle infrastructure itself that's 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 rapidly changing. Um, certainly um, companies like ARM and the silicon um, vendors that they work with are providing a lot of the compute platforms uh, to the, enable these types of dynamic applications uh, and um, couple that with uh, more modern, you know, in some sense, data center technologies, including, you know, Ethernet networks, uh, storage capabilities, et cetera, that are starting to, to make their way inside vehicles. You know, you put all of that together and you, see, you can see how um, the, the vehicle now becomes a platform, a software platform, where you can do all these uh, very creative and dynamic things that allows uh, OEMs to continually enhance and improve their vehicles and ultimately give uh, customers that uh, uh, that fresh and and um, unique experience and delightful experience that uh, um, that they're that they uh, that they're looking for. So with that um, it brings us to the end of our our tech talk here. Um, Tobias, I don't know if we have any questions. we would be happy to answer them. Absolutely. Yeah, let's get to those. And, and firstly, just want to say a massive thank you for a great tech talk, right? Fantastic content and just highlights the the true importance of um of that data part of the automotive side of things. I mean, data is so critical to this and and the great demo and technical content really, really helps signify that. So no, thank you for a great presentation and thank you for being an ARM and Sophie partner. Um, really great to work with you guys. And actually, I just had a couple of things I want to touch on. A couple of things you touched on, which is um, one around standards first and foremost. You know, are there any? Because uh, of course we talked about Sophie as a uh, as an initiative and others, but are there any particular standards that exist for this sort of vehicle data? And do you support any? Uh, yeah, maybe I can take that question. Oh. Uh, so there are very interesting standards around vehicle data. Uh, one of the most known ones is probably like the Cubisa uh, mm. initiative which essentially is trying to bridge uh, these raw signals which are used by engineers, right? Like for example, TCU underscore SPD, blah, 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 which is a very hard kind of like name to remember. And it's trying to bring that over to using more human readable uh, signal names. So that is like one of the uh, standards that we do support. Of course, we also integrate with the whole kind of like Autosar classic, Autosar adaptive suite. Uh, we also have other requirements around vehicle data, especially around cybersecurity, around the UN R155 and uh, R56 uh, standardizations and regulations. So there are a lot of like vehicle data standards that are uh, coming along, especially now that OEMs are like starting to collect all this data. Uh, we also have to think about like GDPR, of course, uh, CCPA, and any other uh, any other standards that may be arising in the future as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and you touched on there about the automotive um, supply chain, particularly around the OEMs, right? And they've been collecting this kind of telematics data for for quite some time. And what I'd love to hear is kind of what's that what's that different part of or what what's different about your solution? What makes it stand out here? Yeah, I can take that on. So um, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the talk, um, you know, we've had connectivity in vehicles for well almost two decades, maybe even more, right? And vehicle telematics is nothing new. Uh, I think what has changed now is that 
um, you know, this, this notion of the vehicle becoming, you know, better, you know, uh, as time goes on, um, you know, it's not the, the vehicle at its best when you buy the vehicle, but rather it gets better as you, as your, as the, the customer experiences it over the years. So, you know, a lot of the, 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 uh, efforts around uh, software defined vehicles is really to be able to enable that sort of continuous innovation, con continuous customer experience improvement uh, type of a paradigm. Uh, and that, you know, a lot of that is fostered by being able to do, um, you know, data obviously provides a lot of the insights to make that happen, all the, the enhancements and improvements, et cetera, um, for in those vehicles. And so, you know, um, uh, with with data being sort of central to that, how you actually collect that data also has to be able to enable that sort of a model. And so, you know, being able to do, um, you know, adapt the data collection to be very precise, to be uh, to be able to then drive different use cases, uh, to be able to do that across different domains so that you can actually um, correlate um, data signals from different parts of the, of the vehicle uh, coming from, let's say the powertrain or, you know the body um, uh, domain being able to to correlate all of those and and to derive sort of these composite insights. Uh, all of those things are are required in order for you to foster that sort of ongoing innovation. And so, what this sort of a solution allows you to do is to be able to collect data in that manner of being flexible, dynamic, you know, real time, uh, being able to do that on pretty much vehicles uh, at any point in their life cycle. Uh, all of those things then lead up to getting lead, lead up to the the sort of that promise of having vehicles on the road that all that are all, always being um, updated and refreshed and continuously improved for a better experience. Absolutely, thank you for that. That's really really great. And do feel and audience keep getting your questions in, and we'll um, we'll start coming to those in just a second. Um, what I'd love to hear a bit more about is kind of your experience here with. Um, with the ecosystem and of course majority of that and a lot of that is going to be um arm based here right who have you kind of i'd love to hear is who have you worked with from a, a silicon vendor level and also within those um within that kind of hardware side of things do you require any specific hardware in the vehicle that is needed therefore to support your solution um so i i'll take that one uh, we don't require any specific hardware. Of course, like our software uh, has been tested on multiple uh, hardware platforms that are running ARM. And that is like our, our preferred choice for sure. Since, uh, for example, we have built with some of our partners a reference board, which is running the ARM uh, Cortex A53 platform. And that's been a dream to be working on because that allows us to use like uh, the whole high performance capability of it and uh, the low energy footprint. And I would say that uh, we're pretty much like hardware agnostic and you can really find ARM processors now everywhere in the vehicle. Uh, so that means that our software could really run on, on any of those domains. Absolutely, thank you, thank you. And we've got a question in around um, from the audience here, and we've got probably a good five minutes or so, so do keep getting your questions in. Um, can you pre-process data on the vehicle side with algorithms, functions, filtering, etc.? I can take that one, Sanjay, or do you want to? Sure, go ahead. Um, yes, that is something that we can do. Um, like, especially if you think about uh, the cost of doing the processing on the cloud side, and all these high-end processors that are actually in the vehicle, it makes a lot of sense to do as much of the processing on the vehicle side uh, that you can, uh, if it's either for detecting event or already for the data that has been collected. So we can do anything from like moving window averages, uh, window functions, up to more complex algorithms. Um, so you could actually define for what a kind of like data input what kind of transformation you want to apply so we're talking about like mapping certain functions uh you can do like arithmetic operations and and as like the question was saying like some uh more complex algorithms using the processing power of the vehicle 
so that I have a less burden on the cloud side once I transfer the data. It's already like uh, pre-processed. It's much more easier to handle, and I don't incur into that much uh, cloud infrastructure costs. Brilliant. Thank you for that. So it's great to hear you can extend that you know, to the vehicle side of things. So really, really detailed answer. Thank you. And I hope, I'm, unfortunately, Zoom didn't capture your name, um, but however it is, um, I hope that answers your question. Um, so before we wrap up, I guess um, I'll ask each of you, um, is there anything, and I'll start, I guess, with Sanjay uh, on your side, is there anything particularly you want to highlight from today's talk or kind of really call out to the audience as a sort of call to action or um, or anything you'd like to particularly highlight here? Yeah, um, I think, um, you know, one thing that, um, um, you know, is, is useful to point out is that you know, as we're as the automotive industry is going through these changes, and these are pretty dramatic changes uh, in the way um, vehicles are being built, architected, and um, and and are being um, put out there as these sort of these these next these new platforms for innovation, for new applications, for new experiences, etc. Um, you know, I think it's important to realize that you know a lot of this is is the really don't need to reinvent the wheel like this this has been um happening in other parts of our you know of our, our you know of our lives right i mean if you look at enterprise computing cloud data centers etc a lot of that transformations happened in those domains as well and so i think there's a lot that you can leverage from those domains into the vehicle and particularly with you know some of these standards based um you know uh hardware like you know the arm based uh silicon um, eth uh, automotive Ethernet, um, the various different um, electrical and electronic components that are becoming more and more um, that are being essentially being derived from the mainstream compute, um, you know, uh, domains uh, allows you know a similar sort of transformation to happen inside the vehicle that we've seen in other domains as well. So, you know, the the, the good news here is that. You know, obviously it's different. A vehicle is different. It's a constrained environment. There's a lot of safety, security requirements. Um, but you know, a lot of the core technologies and the enablers are uh, things that um, we, as an industry, have sort of been been sort of we've traversed that already. And I think we can bring a lot of that into the vehicle as well. Absolutely. Thank you for that. That's really great insight and something you know I totally agree with. Is there's a lot from other industries we can learn from you know, the automotive side of things. And I'm sure it seems daunting, especially in the complexity of cars. But, you know, the, the a lot of these software paradigms we've defined elsewhere and um, the arms helping um, define a lot of ways together with our partners and together initiatives like Sophie. It's great to see so many different levels of the ecosystem coming yeah. together around this and, and enabling this. So and Jaime, on your side, any final words to kind of wrap up here or any summaries you'd like to, for the audience to take away today? Uh, I can just echo uh, Sanjay's word, words. Uh, I think like the automotive industry is going through a, a very big transformation, right? Everyone is talking about software-defined vehicles and what that means and what it contains. And, and a lot of it is being answered with OTA updates. Uh, but for us, it goes also like one step beyond that, which is uh, making the car as configurable as possible so you can face whatever challenges come down the road that you may not know today. Uh, so Collector was just like one of the examples that we were able to show today. Uh, but the whole kind of like vehicle uh, products that we offer are architected in the same way. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about SOA or Ethernet network security, uh, anything like that. Uh, we treat it the same way. And being able to have like that foundation, and it starts like right with the with the with the hardware architecture, um, is key to be able to to essentially face that transformation of of the software defined vehicle. Awesome. I mean, these are fantastic insights. I really, really enjoyed today's tech talk and an audience. I hope you have too. These have been a really great demo, fantastic technical content. So really, really appreciate. Your great questions, Sanjay and Jamie, your fantastic presentation. Uh, I'm going to wrap up shortly, but one break, if we've got one minute left. Sanjay, first, any final wrap up before we, uh, any final thing you'd like to say before we wrap up? No, I think, um, you know, uh, for any any of uh, our audience members who are, who are not um, particularly steeped in automotive, but are in and around um, the sort of technologies around 
um, you know, whether it's the, at the hardware level, software, um, you know, cloud software, the, the you know, uh, um, you know, whether it's microservices, containers, SOA based services, et cetera, this is, you know, the, we run through the whole gamut of all the transformation that's happening both in hardware and software that we're seeing in other domains. For those folks who are, who are sort of in that and are curious about automotive, I think this is a great time to kind of get into that. Automotive companies are certainly looking for uh, for developers and for people who have expertise in these domains and to be able to sort of port them over into the automotive domain. And there's a lot of um, there's a lot of demand for those types of people. So um, certainly I know the, the tech talk goes out to uh, a lot of developers and people who are who are kind of working, at, you know, hands on in, in, in these particular areas. Uh, I think it's a it's a great um, uh, opportunity. Uh, to look into the automotive domain as well, or the op automotive industry as well, uh, to bring some of those the, that experience and talent into the into that um, yeah, into this industry. Absolutely, thank you for that. And Jaime, any final words from you before we wrap up? Uh, no, thank you for everything. It was it was great to be able to share our our part of knowledge into it, and and I hope this was also useful for the audience. I absolutely think it has some really great insight, a fantastic demo, really great technical content. I've really enjoyed it. So Sanjay, Jaime, thank you ever so much for an awesome presentation. Audience, thank you for your engagement and great questions. The recording of today's Tech Talk will be available immediately on YouTube. So if you've missed anything, then just head there and you can catch all of today's presentations and indeed the 66 before that uh, there. Slides will be available very shortly as well afterwards on arm.com. And if you want to sign up for any of our upcoming tech talks for the latest and greatest arm based trends, technologies and best practices with speakers from arm and our ecosystem like Sonatas today, then absolutely do that and head to arm.com slash tech talks. So Sanjay, Jaime, thank you ever so much for a great presentation again. Audience, we'll see you again next week, next Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. BST for another ARM Tech Talk. And this time it's going to be from NXP talking about the Ethos U65 enabled IMX93 applications processor. So sign up for that now and we'll see you then. Thanks.